Hello and welcome back to It's All Good. I'm your host Latavia. Please forgive me. I know it's been a little while since I put out an episode, but you know, I've been dealing with life and life is happening, but all is good. I'm back. Um, if this is your first time listening, welcome. This is a <laughs> weekly podcast for the most part uh, where I just share my experiences and journey um, in this thing called life and adulting. And occasionally, well, more often than not, I'll have a friend, family member, just someone to share their experiences as well. And today I am like, I don't even know exactly if you can hear, but I am very, very excited about my guest today because like I've known him my whole life, literally. <laughs> um, but uh, my cousin, my big cousin, Corey, is joining me today. Um, so, Corey, say hello. Tell the people a little bit about yourself. What's that? My name's Corey Mitchell. Um, like she said, I'm, I'm the big cousin. <laughs> um, got my little man here with me. But um, I'm originally from Florence, South Carolina, but I reside in Columbia now. Um, pre my previous position has been a, a police officer. But February 19, 2020, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And I literally went from walking to, um, to crawling overnight. So I've been wheelchair bound for over, a little over a year now. But I'm in the process of getting back. My feeling is slowly coming back. So give me a little more time and I will be back on my feet. Yes, and I, I believe it. And I am, you just said a whole, whole mouthful. Um, but that... Um, what he just shared that among so many other things are, are one of the, you know, part of why I wanted to have you on. Um, so one, like, hey, I get to, I haven't seen you since, I think that was 2019. We were in Charleston. Yeah. I feel like that's the last time I've no, seen you in it person. It would have been, had to have been 2000, yeah, 2019. Yeah, 2019. That, that seems like so long ago, because um, of course we've had- 2020 was a beast. So. Whew, yeah, so like I said, so many things, but um, I, one of the things that I, in, in starting each episode, I like to start with a gratitude moment. So um, if you would share something or someone that you are grateful for. My wife and my kids, they're my motivation. They, they push me, they push me. My little boy's um, four, my little girl is seven. And when they need something, daddy, get in the chair and let's do this. My wife, get up so you can do this. So what I'm gratitude for is them. Like they, honestly, this past year, they've held me down. I couldn't, I couldn't pick a better partner. So I'm very, very, very gratitude for them. That is wonderful. And I'm like, wait, time is flying. Like you said, four and seven and- You'll be five in June. Who, buddy, time is flying. And every time I think about your wife, I think about like that time you called me like, hey, I met somebody. And I think, and it was literally like not even two, three months later. He's like, yeah, we engaged. And I was like, oh, I just smile every time I think about that. I met her. Two weeks later, we were in a relationship. Eight months later, we was engaged. A year later, we was married. Yes, I was just like. Just like that. Every time I just like, I smile every time I see y'all or I see a post. And I'm like, I remember. And it, I don't know why like that stands out so much. But it's like, I legit remember where I was ago. when you called me. That was 10 years ago. I know. It's, whew, time is flying. But um, as you mentioned, like I said, 2020 was, yeah, I have no words, but I guess just how have you been doing in terms of pandemic aside, I would say before the pandemic, I know the 2020 just started off very, I don't know, just, it had a crazy start to it. Um, but I guess if you could just share a little bit, just kind of how the year started and how, how you have been managing adjusting like you said you went from walking to crawling in the span of a day um and just like what kind of what that experience was or is like the year started i was a police officer for city of columbia i was patrolling 
actually I was on patrol one night and my leg was it, it swelled up. And I mean, it got to the point I couldn't walk on it no more. And um, I, I said, it was a spider bite. So mm -hmm. I went to my corporal and was like, hey, man, I, I, I can't make it no more. I need to go home. So I, that next morning, I went to doctor's care, and they told me it wasn't big enough to be drained yet. So they gave me a prescription. Mm -hmm. So I went home, came back the next day. It had got bigger, so they drained it. Okay. And my prescription, you know, I figured they said it'll take about a week. You'll be over with. About that Wednesday, my legs was getting weak. So mm -hmm. I told the doctor, look, man, something going on. He said, you all right? I have no medical history of getting sick or nothing. Clear, clear record. So I went to the emergency room, what, that, I want to say that Friday. And they ran my blood. They did all that. They sent me home and said, you all right? By Monday, you'll be walking. Okay. So I call auntie. <laughs> so <laughs> right. I say, I say, look, your auntie, something, something going on. <laughs> So she told me to go back to the emergency room and she told me some tests to ask them to run. Mm -hmm. so when I went back to the same emergency room, they're like, Mr. Mitchell, we just had it here. I said, well, can you do a blah, blah, blah test, a blah, blah, blah test? And they looked at me like, how you know about that? I didn't know about that. So they did a full body MRI. Okay. Then uh, It was a female doctor. She came back in the office and she said, I know the problem. And I was like, what's wrong? She said, you got multiple sclerosis. I say, is that a, a definition? That's an abbreviation for something else. You know, tell me I got multiple sclerosis. Right. She said, yes, that's what it is. But unfortunately, we don't treat that here. You got to go to another hospital. Huh. I bust out in tears. I couldn't talk no more. My wife had to take over. Wow. So she gave me a choice of two hospitals to go to. I picked Lexington. I get to Lexington. The doctor said, first off, Mr. Mitchell, you don't have MS. You have MS symptoms. OK. They put me on, they put me on a steroid. And I stayed there for a week, but this was a Monday. That Tuesday, they did a spinal tap to find out what was going on. And I don't know if you ever had a spinal tap, but that needle, that needle about as long as your foot. I haven't had it, but I've heard about it. And I'm just so, like, oof. So I had one. And that Saturday, they sent me to the rehab center to get my strength back to my results come back. My okay. results came back February 19th. They told me I was diagnosed. Mm -hmm. But I stayed in the hospital from February 8th. Well, originally February 4th. I was in rehab from February 8th to March 6th. The COVID pandemic didn't hit to about, about April or May, somewhere around that time. Now, it, it happened after I came out of the hospital. Okay. But COVID actually helped me because with okay. COVID going on, school was out, my wife was home. Oh, that's yeah, that's right. When, when I first came from the hospital, I couldn't stay home by myself. It was a lot of stuff I couldn't do myself. My wife had helped me do. Mm -hmm. So I'm forever grateful for that. But as I got stronger, by the time it was time for her to go back to school, I had my I had more strength, so okay. I could stay home by myself. And like now, I can stay home by myself. I can even keep the kids if need, mm -hmm. if need be. My wife goes somewhere. So COVID helped me out. Okay. And like right now, I really don't go nowhere unless I got an appointment or something. But honestly, me and Kobe had to understand. I don't bother you. You don't bother me. Hey, I got enough going on over here. <laughs> I like that. I'm not mad at that. No, that, so, that is so that, interesting. But yeah, but as far as the pandemic, I mean, it's unfortunate for the way it happened, but it, it's been a blessing in, in disguise to me. Yeah, that's that's good to hear you say that because I know and I've, you know, we've all had conversations this past year and a half about the pandemic and what it is. But like you said, and I've realized even for myself in some ways, it sucks, but it's also been a blessing in other ways. Um, and I am grateful, one, that you're still here, <laughs> first and foremost, um, and that as always, you smiling and have a good <laughs> attitude about it. Um, but just like you said, that you were a, that the, the essentially the world shutting down or slowing down gave you the space and time that you needed to be able to do things essentially, you know, at your pace without feeling like, oh, I gotta hurry up and do this because you know whatever. And so I'm 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 grateful. Tell her I said thank you, um, as I'm, I'm sure I'm, she's gotten plenty of thanks from other people already. Um, the blessings I've received. Um, that probably the most emotional part of this journey. Mm -hmm. And I don't call it a diagnosis or a disease. I call it a situation. The situation too shall pass. Definitely. 
that's how I look at it. Yeah, so I guess in thinking of that, and in, in the process of you doing rehab and getting, and you know, kind of getting stronger, you have not, and I don't think it's possible in our family, you can't just sit down and do nothing. Um, but you haven't just, you know, you've been focusing on you and family and getting stronger, getting better, but you've also been busy in terms of creating things. Um, so I guess if you could talk a little bit about the foundation that you've created and just kind of motivation behind that, what it is, how people can support. While I was in the rehab center, um, most days, you know, if I'm not rehabbing, I'm landing in the hospital bed. Okay. So my support has been phenomenal from what the nurses and the, uh, they tell me the text, they tell me they've never had no one at the rehab center get as many visitors as you. Uh, <laughs> should I say me? I mean, when I rung the bell, it was, it probably was 60 Omegas there. Oh, I believe it. We're we going to talk about that later, but yes. Okay. I'm about to say, but it, it was funny because the old women in there was like, oh, I remember them Omegas. <laughs> So that was funny. You looking over, you see somebody 60, 70 years old. Like, ooh. But that that brought joy to them. So my thing was, what can I do to give back from all this support? Okay. So my thing is, I have support. So when it was time for me to go home, mm -hmm. I went home to a house with my essentials, my necessities. I, I had everything when I went home. But think about that person sitting in a rehab center that's going home and don't have no groceries, don't have the the, the necessities they need you know so my thing is I want to create something that like I could put a packet together I could partner with the rehab center and put mm -hmm. a packet together on behalf of my foundation which is called the core mental multiple sclerosis foundation and I can send them send them with home with something okay they can kind of tell me what's going on and I guess and I that's that's one thing we can do and I got some other stuff in store that I don't really want to let the, the cat out the bag because I don't want anybody to steal my ideas. They tell me <laughs> you need to slow down what you're saying because somebody's going to take it. I, I understand. That's, that's the biggest thing. I want to be able to give to others. And one thing I had to explain to people, I have T-shirts and masks right now. T-shirts are 25, plus sizes are 28, and the masks are 15. The biggest thing is I don't want people to think that money is coming towards me in my situation. Mm hmm I don't get any of that money. That's why you, my cash app is the CMMS Foundation. That's so, totally different from my personal cash app. All that money goes into a separate account. I have a board. I have a chief financial assistant who controls all that. But uh, we, I have my LLC. I'm waiting on my 5013C before we really kick off because we're still fairly new. Okay. But I mean, that's that's the plan to be able to say somebody got a situation they reach out to me i go to the board and say hey this is what's going on what do you guys think mm -hmm. it's not a decision i make on my own because it's an actual foundation all right so Dang. just laying in the hospital bed it was something i came up with and i was told you need to slow down you need to worry about yourself don't don't focus on that don't do that just yet but me focusing on that gives me something to do understood definitely understand that because the crazy part about it i got diagnosed february 19th or 2020 my last day of work was february 19th 2021 what's the eyes of that i mean just just let that sink in for a minute like <laughs> that's that's just crazy it it is all crazy but definitely um yeah, like I said, I'm I'm still, but hey, um, but, I'm not gonna dwell on but that. No, but no, um, you can go on my Facebook page. My entire story is on my Facebook page. Like I have pictures from the last time I walked and videos to today. I keep, I got, a, I got videos of all of that. I got a whole story that I'm writing down. So, so stay tuned. I'm also on PayPal. I'm on um, Venmo. I'm on Zelle. And you can you can buy a shirt, you can buy a mask, or you can just donate. Once once this COVID clear up, there's so much more we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. One thing I, I really want to do to jump off is the rehab center I was at. Mm -hmm. I want to have a cookout in the parking oh. lot. 
for the rehab center. Oh, well, I know all that. the doctors, all the nurses, all the techs. It'll it'd be on us. Mm -hmm. um, the bros going to come out and cook. With some, there will be chicken. <laughs> <laughs> How you know they're going to be chicken? <laughs> I, it, look, I'll, I'll, let me rephrase. There better be chicken. You ever seen there. a bro get together without chicken? Exactly. You you know that I you know that I'm familiar. Right. Uh, but uh no, I think that is amazing. I am in awe. I'm proud. Uh I got my shirt coming, y'all. So I definitely encourage you to get yours as well as the mask. And I'll be sure to put all of the information in the show notes um when the episode airs so that way people can see it, they can learn. Like we're I know we're we don't have time to go through the whole year of just everything, but um, they're getting, you're getting a snippet. You're getting some of the story. And even before 2020, to me, there's still so many other things that you've done, that you've accomplished that I'm just, like I said, I've always looked up to you, but it's, this is just another example of how you keep moving forward. You keep, you know, staying positive and not giving up, which like I said, I feel like, and, and being in, in our family, uh, some of it I honestly believe is kind of, it's maybe it's inherited or it's genetic. Uh, and some of that of just wanting to in taking care of self, but more not even being so focused on taking care of self, but giving to others and how giving to others is so fulfilling. And it, you know, in helping others, you help yourself and your family as well. My biggest thing is my kids looking at me like, so in their head, as they get older, they're going to see where they, they dad was a fighter, right? They saw me getting knocked down. They see me getting back up. So that's the main thing. And I look at it like this. I, MS, I got it. I can't mm -hmm. give it back. I got, I got to roll with it. And I look at MS as that, that person you get tired of. Mm -hmm. you know, whether it's your cousin, your friend, your significant other, you know, some days you you just want you you can tolerate them. Mm -hmm. Some days you can't stand them. And some days you just want them out your face. And to me, that's what MS is. Because MS is like a social security number. It, it, everybody got a, it's different for everybody. Okay. And you will be surprised how many people around you has MS, but are scared to speak of it. And not just MS, anything. Mm -hmm. When I came out, and it took me a minute to come out, especially like I didn't want to do when I first came home. I did a um, what you call it, um, go fund. Mm -hmm. It helped with some stuff around the house because I had to get my house. I had to get doors wet on widen. I got okay. a chair to take me up and downstairs, and I was like, I didn't want to do it because when I see people with that on Facebook, I figure it's a gimmick. Right. So I didn't want to do it, but somebody talked me into doing it. So. I did it and it was very helpful, very helpful. So that was that was the first bless. Um, when I first started my foundation, I, I did a foundation on Facebook and I didn't realize when you create a foundation on Facebook, you gotta be careful how you do it. Cause I thought I was raising money to get my foundation started, mm -hmm. but I actually raised two, $2,000 and we gave it to the multiple sclerosis Found society. Oh, okay. So my foundation already gave away two thousand dollars to the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation. So we gotcha. we we got a good jump start as far as giving. Mm -hmm. That's why we came with that. But the thing is, man, like you got to give back. You got to let people see you fight. But when I first announced I had multiple sclerosis, so many people called me. People I knew. I was like, this 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 is not a new fad now. You know, these ain't shoes. <laughs> right. Like, like I'm not just like, saying this just to say. Yeah, yeah, like this person got it. This person got it. This person got it. I'm like, for real? The mm. same. Y'all acting like this is newest Jordan, pair of Jordans. <laughs> but like my doctor told me, he's never seen no one get hit as hard as I got hit. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he's never seen nobody they bounce back like I'm bouncing back. Like when I go to different doctors, they be like, they just, they just love to see me. They say my spirit and my attitude is just so forthcoming. And I'll be honest with you, I tell people I make it look easy. But it's not easy by far. I can only imagine. And you you definitely make it look like, all right, 
and I, I love seeing you know the videos and it's helpful like I said especially because from a distance and then also with the the pandemic of being able to see like okay he's good you know you get the second third hand you know the reports of from, from like I get the telephone line down but it's good to see it and then also know that okay like I know okay I'm sure there are days where you are like I'm like you said I'm over it I don't want to I'm just I don't feel like it but I love that you keep getting up every day and pushing you know in some way uh just to keep pushing forward and like you said so that your kids can see it um but it's I appreciate also that you are you have been vocal about it because like you said, there's a lot of people, I've heard, I've heard about it, knew about it, but I didn't really know about it. So when it was like, wait, he, he's got MS, wait. Nobody I, in the family has it. Right, it, it, and it was it's just It's hereditary, like, but nobody, I've asked my mom, you know, she know everybody. I've asked grandma, you know, mm -hmm. nobody, it, nobody has it. Yeah, and that's the part that's like, I guess it's still like, wait, so if it's hereditary, who did it come from? I like to be the first at stuff, but not this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm vocal about it because think about that person sitting at home wanting to give up and, uh -huh. you know, scared to speak about it. So if I can help somebody, that, that's what I'm here for. Cause, I mean, exactly. Not and alone. I'm I am sure that you have and will continue to to be an inspiration as well as a help to people, just you as yourself and then definitely through the foundation. So, you know, whatever I can do to help, please let me know. Uh, it has been, I would say, a bit of an educational experience for me as well of like, hold up, I didn't think it looked like this. How does that happen? Like, because I just spread remember thinking word. like- just, just spread a word, but when this COVID clear up, uh, we're going to have all kinds of stuff. Like, we're going to have all kinds of stuff. Right now, I'm just, I ask that if someone gets a shirt or they get a mask, I ask that they post it. Or they only, if you don't want to post it on social media, just send me the picture. Okay. I keep a catalog with everybody that has a, pic, a, a shirt on. I've shipped shirts as far as, I think they're either in Japan or Korea. Okay. But somebody I went to high school with is they're, they're stationed overseas. So I shipped the shirt over there. I mean, I got a shirt going to Texas, going to Chicago, going to um, Jersey. I mean, I got shirts everywhere because the way people reach out and then my frat brothers got to love them. They got shirts everywhere. So right. I keep a catalog. Like all of this is a story. So when I look back on it, I'm going to be like, wow. That's it. it wow i am excited about what is coming because like i said just the stuff that you know that you've done already and like i said as long well i've known you my whole life but I, i've always known you as someone to like you said you like being the first and i feel like you were definitely you you did some first um at least as far as i know and in terms of being an example where whether you were trying to be or not, I think like for us little cousins, uh, you have been that, but, um, and you mentioned Omega. And even in that, I remember having conversations about, hey, this is something I'm thinking about, something I wanna do. And it wasn't just talk. <laughs> you, you know, you followed through, you made that a reality. And so how, and for those who don't know about fraternities and sororities, um, I, I, like I said, growing up, my dad is, is also an Omega. And I'm so- still waiting on, I'm waiting on y'all to tell me where his stash at, where all his stuff at. I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. He, now, he does have a room. I don't know if you've been to the house, but he does have a space now where there are some things but he keeps claiming there is no stash but dad says in grandma attic that's what i think but he claims it's not there i don't know we'll I see some, i need some of that his old stuff well i would say come to the house and you know go to the house they have he has some stuff that you could probably 
No, I can't get that shield and that pillar. He ain't letting that pillar go. No, no. That that one, that one. <laughs> I know about the pillar. Yeah, the pillar. And, and he got a cigar box. Those are the only three things that I know of, like that are visible, um, or that I feel is sacred. It is, and I'm. I want to know a little bit more of the story behind it. Maybe you can get that story because I probably won't. But that pillow is, I, yeah, that pillow's been been there. Um, He's the reason I became an omega. Really? Yes. Because you got to look at it. Is there is no Greek in our family as uh, older older uh, family members. Well, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right about that. <laughs> you have your daddy, and now you have Tane. And then you have me. Mm -hmm. Now, after me, the younger ones, you, Jazz, uh, Ryan, um, Bran, um, Ashley. Mm -hmm. That's it, because you got to realize our family didn't go really go to college. Right. And I, I was thinking about that too. And that's why I said like, even in that, I know. And then you not just going to college, but you went, you went away. You like, <laughs> you didn't stay right. You know, you didn't stay close to home. You, you went further away to go to college. So it's, yeah, you're right. It is, it's growing. In yeah. Terms. All the younger cousins are going to college. Like, yeah. Um, Jacora will graduate in December. My nephew, mm -hmm. he graduated in December. Like, Lante graduated. Like, a lot of them follow my footsteps and went to Benedict. Yes. Ashley graduated from Benedict. Lante graduated from Benedict. Jacora finna graduate from Benedict. Um, I don't know who else is coming. Well, I believe it's going to be some more Benedict legacies. You know, I, I thought about it, but then I was like, South Carolina is far from where I was, but. Well, you see, uh, we're going to be in the Macy Parade. I saw, I saw. So y'all so y'all keep sleeping on BC. I'm not sleeping on it. Like I said, I, I would, without even really knowing anything about it, I was talking about Benedict. Cause like my cousin go to Benedict. Yeah, I don't know nothing, but I know my cousin is there. There's nothing like a HBCU and the world is starting to acknowledge. Oh, most definitely. I wholeheartedly agree with you there. Um, and I didn't go for undergrad, but I'm grateful for my HBCU experience. And I am loving the fact that it is now like on the main stage of understanding that no, they're not less than. You're not getting second rate anything. If anything, you're getting first rate. You get you getting even more. Uh, from attending an HBCU, the experience, the connections, just on and on and on. So I love the fact that people are like, wait, what? What is that? And even in conjunction with that, because our vice president is not only an HBCU grad, she is a member of a, you know, a divine nine sorority. So here in AKA Delta, Zeta, you know, SG Rho, Omegas, Kappas, and Sigmas, everybody, um, like that's becoming more common. And it's not, it's not getting that side eye that I feel like it always has, especially when you talk about um, fraternities and sororities or black fraternities and sororities. Uh, but like speaking of which just, how has, you mentioned, um, you know, your frat brothers being helpful, but just, I guess how, versus how, sometimes people say, oh, you join that cult or you join this, like. You join that gang. Right, you join that gang, y'all got y'all secret this, whatever. But I feel like we know that it's about, about more than that, much more than that. But I feel like your experience highlighted or amplified what brotherhood is about. Um, so if you, you could just talk a little bit more about that. I know you said that they were there, but in terms of how- I've had can, people, I've had bros reach out to me from, from all over. Like I got a bro in Texas. I could pick up the phone right now and call him. And me and him would be on the phone about an hour or two before we realized it. Never ever seen him face to face. Mm-hmm. I got, I have, I have my situation. He called to check on me. He going through a similar situation and we just talk like that. As far as the local bros, um, 
it's been over a year mm -hmm. and my doctor's appointments and therapy appointments, my wife don't have to take me to. Them. They take me to. Them. Uh, if we need something, they got me. Um, I got somebody cutting the grass, but if I need grass cut, they come cut the grass. Like they tell me all the time, if you need something, let me know. But me being who I am, <laughs> if I don't have to, I don't bother you. That just that just who I am. But they've been phenomenal. When I was in the hospital, it's nothing for my phone to go off and it'd be some somebody cash out me some money, say, hey, get us to your wife for gas. Get us to your wife for something to eat. Because mm -hmm. she running back and forth to the hospital. So they were paying for gas. You know, they her and the kids need something to eat. They come by the house, and make sure she has something to eat. The wives will call her. Like it just I, the the support is more emotional than anything else. Like if, mm -hmm. if I could tell you some of the stuff I was blessed with, you would be like, wow. Like the blessings is is constantly coming. Constantly coming. I mean, I can't even like. It just it's it's, un, it's unfoundable. I mean, it's un, it's just I can't even I can't even words can't express. They've wow. come through. It's wow. it's a true brotherhood. I love to hear it. Um, like I said, I know you know I knew this already. But one of the things that I do, uh, like one of the other things in terms of you talking about your experience and sharing and putting it out there, is that you are a very proud Omega man and you highlight that as well um because you know my dad's Omega man um <laughs> but I love that in in talking about your experience and how you're giving back it's also showing the fraternity I feel like in a light that is not often shown like in I think for those who are a part of the respective organizations know about it but those outside of it, like you said, this is, oh, you in that gang, or all they do is you you want to stroll, or you want to party hop, or you going to do this and wear letters, but it's, this is service. It's a service. Like this is service exemplified. It's not just talk. It, it's we're about action. And they've done that. And I am, like I said, grateful that they are being men of their word um and and being there for you and doing that so that you have that local support support system I guess you have family but it just like I said I just I'm happy because I know out of all, all the fraternities Omegas definitely get a bad rap often and so yeah you know we wholesome you are and some of y'all make some interesting choices but like I said with my dad you know my dad being one it's always been near and dear to my heart and so I and I've always known that there's more to it than what people try to say um and so like I said it's just like yes go ahead and be that example um and on top but, of all that uh I help um instrument uh instrumental um we got a feeling space which is a pantry Okay. So whereas we used to feed families Thanksgiving and Christmas, mm -hmm. this year we fed a family for Easter. We trying to feed families year round now, instead of just okay. for the holidays. And you said it. What you say it was called again? The filling station. Okay. So within this pandemic, we're feeding families. That's, That's just one awesome. thing we're doing outside of the, the, the ordinary. Right. So well, that, don't, don't, don't sleep on the bros. He's saying that to y'all listening. Um, and I'm going to echo it, but um, you mentioned uh, earlier that February 19th, 2021 was your last day uh, on the force. So I remember <laughs> when you said that you were becoming a police officer and being like, wait, huh? Wait, I, I didn't see that coming. So nobody um, did. Yeah, so just, and that's why I say one of the things like you've always, you just said doing something different, but not being afraid to step out of the, you know, quote unquote mode or what people are thinking you should do. So just what was that, <clears throat> excuse me, I guess that experience, like in terms of even deciding to 
become Every, that everybody that know me know me to work at Walmart. Started working at Walmart my freshman year. Um, worked my way up. It got to the point where as I was doing so good at Walmart, I would ask my college professors, um, you know, what do you think career wise? You were at Walmart. You pay good money. <laughs> trying to I went to school for this. Can I? Right. Can I I know what I, I went to school for? <laughs> ah man, you made good money. You made you made more than me. I say, okay. When I graduated from undergrad, I went to grad school. Mm-hmm. Came time to graduate from grad school. My professor said, Hey, my company is hiring. I can get you a job. It's a four thousand dollar signing bonus. I get half. What? What do you say? For getting you the job. Oh. Okay. I raised my hand because it, it, it's experience. Mm-hmm. No, you got a good job. No, don't leave Walmart. Walmart is great. The old Walmart is great. Mm. I worked for Walmart right at 20 years. Um, I previously, I was manager of the year for the entire company. That's any place you see a Walmart logo. I was manager of the year. They flew me to Arkansas. They rolled out a red carpet. Life was great. Mm-hmm. People want to hire me worldwide. No, I want to stay here in Columbia. Position came open. Crazy part about it, I didn't see the position open. So they say they were interviewing for it. I said, I didn't see the position. I didn't get the chance to interview. They closed the position and opened it back up for my name to be in. It. So what's everybody thinking? What's your first thought? Oh, you're going to get it. Exactly. <laughs> oh man, just when it was getting good. I hope you've enjoyed thus far. Please stay tuned for part two next week. And remember, life is a journey, not a destination. And in the end, it's all working together for our good. Until next time. <laughs>